Market Prep. I'm Brianna Valeski here with my co-host Joel Alconin. We're, di- we're joined by Don Kaufman. He's the Chief Derivatives Instructor for Simpler Options. Uh, Don is one of the industry's leading option strategists and educational gurus. He's got more than 17 years of industry experience and he oversees Simpler Trading's firm-wide strategy and deployment initiatives while also designing and executing upon innovative content in the financial education space. Don, thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. So we've entered the heart of earnings season, and it kind of seems like it's been somewhat of a relief for traders and investors who are finally able to talk about something other than the Fed and interest rates, other than what's going on in Greece. How has earnings season been so far for you? Not bad, not bad. You know, I, uh, I'm i an options geek, so I'm much more into <laughs> things like implied volatility. So, yeah, you know, the, the kind of the kind of market that we saw two, three weeks ago, I enjoy that. Like, I like volatility. I know most most traders don't like me saying that, but I enjoy the volatility. And the volatility in the market, though, in, uh, in like the last 10 trading days, just got crushed. I mean, mm-hmm. just the volatility just came, you know, flying out of the market. All of a sudden, earnings, again, become kind of the, uh, you know, the, the thing to talk about, which is surprising because if you're in a more volatile market, that's what everybody focuses on. And all of a sudden, you know, earnings now are uh, front and center. That's, uh, that's what, you know, on a day-to-day basis we're focusing on now. Let's talk about some of these companies, particularly that have had earnings this week. Um, you know, IBM, our last guest on the show was just mentioning, you know, he thinks people would actually buy IBM if they had a story to tell, not just vague generalities. I mean, I know they have Watson, and that's like this really cool thing, but it doesn't seem like they're really able to communicate their, their purpose and passion to investors. Yeah, you know, with with looking at IBM, which is looks like it's going to open down about, 10 bucks this morning, which is outside of the the options expected move. I think the options market was looking for oh about a eight dollar move, and it's, it's going to open up about 10 bucks. We'll we'll see. It's again, I I tend to agree with you. I mean, if you ask most people about IBM, what do they even do other than you know the Watson is the only name that's kind of like public. It's become so much more of like a services company. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you looked at like and you asked somebody 10 years ago. You know, what would be a bigger company, IBM or Apple? You know, 10 years ago, almost everybody would have told you IBM, right? And Apple now, you know, the largest company. I just oh, had to yeah. throw that comparison out there because IBM was it, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And uh, uh, again, it's kind of, you know, fallen by the wayside here and a uh, little bit of an earnings snafu right now, taking the stock down a couple of bucks. Well, me. Speaking of Apple, we are going to get their earnings reports later today after the close. It seems like there's always a ton of excitement surrounding their earnings report, lots of hype, and they they usually beat. Uh, What's your long and short-term outlook on Apple? Do you have an Apple Watch? (laughs) I do not have an Apple Watch. I don't think, like, I think it's awesome that they are kind of pioneering the wearable tech. You you do have the Fitbit and you have the Garmin, but it's not, like, where I would like it yet. Like, I'd like to see a few more iterations of an Apple Watch. Do you have an Apple Watch, though? I do. I do. I mean, I'm I'm a little bit... I'm a little bit of a Mac geek out there. You know, I got my Mac-issued underwear on, my Apple Watch, (laughs) my phone, my iPad. Um... No, it's got it's got a ways to go. It's you know for what for what I do for trading, mm. it's incredibly convenient. It was worth the three four hundred bucks for the watch simply because hey, it taps me on the wrist every time an alert wow. is hit. I, I mean, I'm not always sitting in front of the computer screen. Uh, Apple today, you know, although there's a lot of like you know, I guess pent up excitement around this earnings announcement. Yeah. So Apple's only pricing in right now about a four and a half percent move um so the short duration options got like three days left here the the at the money straddles trading for like you know six bucks plus so it's just over about a a six dollar move kind of being priced in that's not that big on a 132 dollar stock again it's about four and a half percent move in there so yes everybody's looking at it and apple better have some wonderful numbers because again how much has this stock run up you know prior to this announcement and the answer is it's fairly incredible i mean we were sitting two weeks ago 
at 120, not even a full two weeks ago, 120, the stock has now run to 132. Um, you have to wonder with you know a few of these underlyings, is everything already priced in? I mean, look at the run that you've seen in some stocks prior to the earnings, you know, Netflix, Google, mm-hmm. and it's again prior to the earnings. Let's even not talk about when Google's earnings came out. <laughs> um, Tesla's doing it right now, although Tesla's down this morning, but the run-ups prior to these earnings have been staggering. I do want to talk to you about Tesla, but before I jump over, I would love to go back to what you said about how, as a trader, the Apple Watch helps you. Usually, a lot of the focus on the Apple Watch is the health technology, and of course, there's a ton of competition in that page, in that space with Fitbit and Garmin. But can you just describe a little bit more, like on a day-to-day basis, how, as a trader, you're interacting with your Apple Watch? It's funny you mentioned the health part. So I, I work out like an hour and a half or so a day, and I'm usually taking the watch off now. Uh, I'm annoyed by its algorithm really? for health. I really am. I mean, it's it's probably not as, as good, some of the apps. Yet, but the apps are getting better every day. Um, on the trading side of it, so I worked in a technology group. Although I'm a trader, I worked in a technology group at Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade for for 15-plus years. So I'm pretty much into technology as much as you can possibly get there. I needed, I mean, you got to look at the watch as an extension of your phone, and you just need like a little, you know, tap on the wrist once in a while, and you set alerts and you mm-hmm. trade executions, and it provides it. Even when you're trading in front of screens, I mean, it's instantaneous when you're executing orders. So you might be looking at the chart. Next thing you know, your watch is tapping you on the screen, letting you know, Another underlying you got executed in, it's phenomenal that way. And that's pretty much what I got it for. Not to mention, you know, during a trading day, you leave for a while, set a couple of alerts, or you want to look at some quotes. You don't have to pull a phone out of a pocket. It's, it's come to that, that point where I'm that lazy that I don't want to pull the phone out of the pocket anymore, right? Um, but moreover, again, it's more about, you know, you don't hear your phone or something. as an order execution hanging out there. This you can't miss. It's undeniable when the uh, when the watch kind of taps you on the wrist. So uh, I'm into that feedback. It's it's actually been incredibly helpful. So are you entering trades on it? No, you can't enter trades yet. yet. Which is okay. It's un- yeah, and it's, yeah. You know, it's so new that I think a lot of the developers are just getting them, and you can kind of see that. And so I've had it almost since it came out. Um, I figured, ah, you know. I bought the iPad probably like two months before, you know, after it came out. I'm like, oh, I'm so upset that I waited. So I bought it right when it came out. Mine got delivered like immediately, which kind of made me a little nervous about like Apple Watch sales. We'll see today, Mm -hmm. uh, later in the day. But um, you can see the developers are getting better at it. There's not a huge amount of apps for the watch that I think are all that functional. Like I just traveled last week. I was in Chicago. I was in Detroit. And uh, the Uber app on the watch, yeah, it's, it's not doing it for me. <laughs> yeah, a little, okay. little tough to see. But it, it's still new. I guess we'll have to give it a little time for uh, some of those developers to roll out newer and better technology for those Apple Watch apps. Um, moving back to some of our general market talk, Tesla getting hit with a sell rating this morning. We were kind of looking to see if any other analysts had a sell rating, and uh, I think we found one with an underweight, and then the lowest price target, you know, Joel, come in if I'm remembering incorrectly, I think we saw it was like a 165 was the lowest price target for Tesla. What's your, I mean, what's your take on the company right now? We, we hold on to every, every word that Elon Musk tweets. They just come out with this ludicrous mode for their car. What do you see in Tesla? Hey, first of all, when you're quoting ludicrous mode, that's, that's quoting Spaceballs. So <laughs> oh, really? A little, little worried. Yeah, yeah that's, that's from Spaceballs. And, you know, he was even questioned about that. So ludicrous mode, um, you know. Then they're going to be saying we're going plaid because, anyway, space ball quotes in there. Um, <laughs> in terms of Tesla, I actually hold a position in Tesla, and it's, it's not a long position. It's a short position, ultimately, because this thing has become, you know, kind of an overcooked turkey a little bit. It's, this is not a short-duration short position. I mean, I'm going to probably hold this position for quite a considerable amount of time, but I am short Tesla. I think it's trading at, uh, and I'm not much of a fundamental guy, but I think it's trading, and a lot of stocks are 
just a ridiculous multiple at this point. Sure, demand is there, but they're not even able to supply these vehicles right. yet. We're talking about cars that are going to be released two years from now. You know, batteries that are getting four or five percent better. So instead of getting 280 miles, now you might be able to get almost 300 miles. And I think a lot of people that were expecting more out of the announcement last week from Tesla, mm -hmm. they didn't necessarily get it. I mean, we're expecting something, and what we got, we got ludicrous mode over there, and the stock's still running up. It's, it's ultimately, it's a charge to the upside in, in technology right now. Um, regardless of what the earnings announcements happen to be, or regardless of, you know, what kind of disappointing announcement that, you know, Tesla happened to have. And in this case, I didn't think it was a great, a great announcement. And I watch, you know, Elon Musk very, very closely. I'm actually a really big fan of Tesla vehicles. But again, at almost $300 a share on this underlying, we're so far beyond what the multiple could possibly support. You know, this is not Amazon where you're you know, $20 billion, you know, going through the company and making absolutely nothing over there. I get the valuation maybe on that side, but here at Tesla, they real tangible product that's going to consumers. They just don't have enough of them and they don't have the capability in the next couple of years to get that supply chain up and running. So not a, uh, again, not a real bull in Tesla at, you know, the $270 level. Hey, Don, you know, I'm totally with you on that. I'm a huge fan of electric cars. I think Elon Musk has a lot of really great ideas, great vision, but it's all about, I mean, what you're able to actually make happen. Their production facilities are not up to par. They're not able to su supply all of this want out there. So I'm kind of with you on that Tesla front. Uh, do you see Tesla as an auto company or a tech company? Much more technology. Yeah. And in a you know in a few years, I really think that that's that's going to be seen uh, much more in the forefront. Is they're they're going to move into different areas, you know, stemming from obviously the electric vehicles. They're already moving into a division where it's battery packs battery. for their houses and so forth. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I definitely see them as uh, more innovation technology. Not to say you're not going to see other technology companies though get into the car business which mm -hmm. has been rather untouched, if you will, other than Tesla, you know, in the last hundred years. Yeah, the car business, I mean, just not extremely high margins, so I can see even why it's hard for people to get in. But let's talk tech now. Facebook hitting all new all-time highs. Uh, are you trading Facebook? Are you interested in trading it? I am. I am. So Facebook, I mean, it's, it's going to be front and center stage next week with its earnings. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook's also going to have a, fairly large expected move. It's going to probably have like a 7% move kind of price really? in next week. This week, I'm thinking it's going to go and touch right to 100. Um, we're, we're so close right now. Uh, you ever see stocks that get up to the upper 90s? They're drawn right to the $100 level. So uh, many of us are actually trading for this week. Uh, if you're familiar with options, I'm trading the 100 butterfly. So we're, we're looking for Facebook towards the end of the week to land smack on 100. We'll see if it happens. It's a cheap shot. Looking for uh, that upside potential, though, in, uh, in Facebook. As, as I'm talking now, by the way, my watch is tapping me that I've been executed in a few trades. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, again, it's unmistakable. you got to love it. At the same time, uh, it's a little distracting from time to time. So, yeah, I'm looking for, uh, for Facebook to touch the 100 level. It's right now, right here all-time highs where we sit we're you know 98 half and uh, again next week though a fairly decent size expected move around its earnings and again these companies they better produce I've kind of felt some of the earnings that have come out at this point uh, uh, Google aside have been okay mm -hmm. not spectacular like you know the market's taking off to the upside some of the earnings have been decent uh, however, I think more important than the earnings is what's the market doing at any given point in time. It's boring out there. We've had an explosive rally, you know, in the last two weeks of trade, and that's what really matters. So, you know, more than just what the conference call says, more than the earnings, you know, order flow is generated 
in these underlyings more or less around what's the market doing at any given point in time. And right now we are rallying day in and day out. I mean, today's the, the first hint we actually see some red on our screen in quite some time. We're on the line with Don Kaufman. He is the Chief Derivatives Instructor for Simpler Options. Don's looking for Facebook to hit triple digits this week. Uh, we've got a couple minutes left with here, Don. So let's talk about IPOs. You know, you mentioned, and I thought this is a really intriguing comment, that you take your Apple Watch off when you go to the gym. So does that mean you're not really into uh, wearable tech for fitness? What Have you been following Fitbit at all? I have. I have. I've watched Fitbit, and I find that the Fitbit, you can sleep in that. It actually picks up on your sleep right, patterns and so sleeping. forth. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, the Apple Watch, you, you have to take it off every night. you got to charge it and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, wearable fitness, uh, to me, is, is a little bit more maybe of a fad than it is the future. I think a lot of people, you know, that, that do work out on a day-to-day -day basis, to me, having a watch or a Fitbit on, it's a little bit of an annoyance more than anything. Um, it's another thing to kind of get in the way. I mean, what, what do you have to work out now? You have to go with your phone. You have to have your Bluetooth headphones on. You've got to have a watch <laughs> now. You know, i got to start wearing gear to, to go work out. It's getting, uh, getting a little bit crazy. Uh, but I would say with, with a Fitbit as an IPO, that's, that's a brutally tough space that they're getting into right now. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Apple is your and one of your bigger competitors granted the, the watch is three four times more expensive nevertheless uh that's something i wouldn't want to be in a you know competition with apple with some of the resources that they're going to be able to pull out um i think you're probably going to see some other you know recent ipos maybe a company like gopro that's going to get into a very similar space though for uh, for wearables so you don't think of like GoPro as competing with somebody like Apple, you should. Because uh, undoubtedly that's technology and they're going to start going that direction. They're already into wearables. It would make sense they go into fitness wearables as well. Uh, Don, a few questions here. Uh, you must not be swimming if you uh, if you take all that stuff to work out, uh, uh, a watch and the headphones and everything. So uh, interesting point there. I want to talk about the structure of your Tesla position here. Are you doing it via the common? Are you playing it through the options? It's, you know, difficult to trade that stock. Are you giving yourself some time? What strike prices are you looking at? All right, so this, <laughs> it's funny you mentioned the, uh, the Tesla position. I am outright short the stock, um, smaller position. However, I would not suggest that for most <laughs> traders. I just, it, because I'm going to hold the position for a significant amount of time. When people look at trades they put on, you're like, whoa, how could you be short the stock? It's a small, measurable position. You know, I'm pretty comfortable with the size and trading. But... You know how people go out and they buy a stock and they sell calls against it because, well, they like the stock. They sell the calls against it in a covered call because they want to, you know, bring in some of the premium over there. The age-old methodology of the covered call, I just do the opposite. I mean, there are companies that I have like a love-hate relationship with. I'll get short a stock and I'll sell puts. For instance, like a day like today where, you know, Tesla's down 10, maybe 15 bucks by the close. I'll sell puts into the volatility, which is advantageous as stocks fall, the volatility goes up, puffs up the you know the premium of the puts, and I'll sell those against my short stock position. Uh, okay, okay. For okay. most though, vertical spreads are going to be easier. It's going to define your risk. It's going to keep you from getting your head lopped off and volatility going up or down. And you do the vertical spreads right. You know you do them out a month, two months, three months. You can, again, sustain the position for such an extensive amount of time, knowing what your risk is going to be. I mean, vertical spreads for most clientele are going to be the way to go in a trade like that. So uh, you, try and, you try and get the common on. If you get the common on going your right way, then you then you sell the puts. You kind of take in some of the premium there. So definitely a sophisticated strategy, but if you could get that first leg on and get it your way, you could take advantage of the options market as well. Uh, just kind of taking the opposite end of things. I mean, if you're bearish Tesla, are you bullish these automakers? Uh, GM gone nowhere basically since its IPO, probably even a little 
bit lower. Holding hit 30 bucks. I don't know if we've got down to 30 even yet. Ford hanging out in the mid 14s here. Any any hope for these companies? I, in this market, no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's not going to be a huge amount of upside, or they would have seen it. Like you're exactly right. Look at the last two weeks of trade where the entire market explodes to the upside. I mean, Ford is completely left behind. It's done nothing but, you know, come off in the last two weeks of trade from the, you know, that 15, mid-15 level down in almost a buck in the same time where, again, the S&Ps rallied, you know, 4 to 5%. Mm-hmm. So uh, it doesn't, doesn't look good for some of the automakers. That is an interesting trade, though unto itself if you consider tesla you know a car company somebody that's you know into a parish trade like a long tesla Mm -hmm. short ford or gm uh there's a trade in there there's a trade in everything okay uh one final question for you you mentioned the uh the straddle being priced out at ibm i think you said it what six bucks or something like that and um and it was already trading more than that now i was looking at this ibm chart here in the pre-market just thinking everybody i kind of look at the opposite like okay everyone that shorted this over the last 10 days is getting their head handed to them and now it's right back there so when you want to when a, a stock has a bigger move than the expected you know built-in price do you do you expect it to you know come back the opposite way a little bit which is exactly what ibm is doing this morning we've rallied yeah. uh, it's almost the, uh, over two points off the, the level for people that don't trade options even if you don't want to trade options i get it but you got to look at them because yep. there's so much order flow being generated in the stock around the options I mean, there's a lot of stocks today, IBM specifically yesterday. The number of option contracts that traded in IBM yesterday supported all the volume in the stock, meaning that the volume in the stock was being generated by what's going on in the options market. I mean, because everybody, ha- they have to hedge their options positions using the stock. I don't want to go too deep into, like, the market-making side of the business, but ultimately it's, it's the cart leading the horse in a lot of cases with something like IBM where, again, the, the stock itself is being moved by what's going on with the options. So you get yesterday about a $7-plus expected move. And that's just saying the, the options, the at-the-money options, were pricing in just over a $7 move. There are hundreds of millions of dollars at stake for a $7 move. And a lot of times, it, it's not just like a self-fulfilling prophecy. The stock can be drawn to the edge of the expected move because there's that much skin in the game at those levels. Hopefully that, that makes a degree it of sense. It does. It, it makes a yeah. great degree of sense. And I mean, I talk a lot about that when you see a big move in the options market and I say, hey, you know, if there was a big move in the stock, someone, these option guys are just not going naked, you know, either in the options or the big stock traders are just not going naked. They're, they're laying off. But great information from Don Kaufman. He's chief derivatives instructor for Simpler Options, giving us a lot of ways to look at the market. Don, we went a little bit late here. Thanks for your time. We hope to speak to you again soon. Thanks so much, Don. Thanks, guys.